Today, we're taking a stroll down memory lane to check out some design trends that are making a serious comeback. We're diving into everything from the resurgence of Chrome to antique furniture. A lot of these trends are pretty exciting, but others might make you question if we've hit the rewind button on style. So let's dive in. Okay, so first up is Chrome. Yep, the shiny reflective finish you probably remember from your parents' old CD racks or those disco balls at the roller skating rink. It is all having a moment again. The 1990s and disco era were obsessed with Chrome. It was literally used on everything from lighting to side tables and chair legs. Perhaps you're wondering why it is even making a comeback. If you've taken notice, color palettes have shifted significantly to much warmer, more yellow tone color for maybe the past two to three years. This shift is a result of the cool gray trend that has dominated. And like all trends, people get bored and the next one is often a reaction to the last. Now, I just wanna say my piece here, that I don't think you should rip things out every few years to follow the latest trends. And if you followed me, you'll know that I never advocate for catching trends, but rather on how it can be better executed. Because let's be real, trends are often taken to the extreme and poorly done or used out of context. So when you're watching this video, take a look at its origin, how you can use them well, if you want to, or to get up to speed on what is on at the moment. Because whether you like it or not, our choices are somewhat influenced by trends because everything that is sold by retailers is often a response to what is trending. Okay, back to Chrome. As color palettes are now shifting towards warmer tones, silver metals are coming back because it adds a fresh twist to the contemporary interior design landscape. And like I've always said, contrast is very important if you wanna create an interesting space. But the real question is, should we be rolling out the red carpet for Chrome's grand return or is it better left in the past? Well, here's the thing. Chrome can be a bit intense. It is bold, it is flashy, and if it's overdone, it can definitely feel cold and sterile. But when you sparingly, Think a sleek faucet, a pendant light, table lamps, or some nice armchairs. It can add just the right amount of contrast and visual interest to a space. If you're not ready to dive headfirst into the chrome craze but still want a fresh metallic accent, polished nickel is your next best bet. Think of it as chrome's more understated and sophisticated cousin. Still shiny, but with a hint of warmth thanks to those subtle golden or amber undertones. It ties in much more closely with today's warmer and earlier palettes, so it is perfect if you want a softer look without all the flash. But fair warning, polished nickel isn't a set it and forget it type of finish. It will develop a patina over time. On one hand, this is great as it adds character to the space, but it will lose that initial shine. So if you're after something that will stay shiny as the day you bought it, chrome is the way to go. But if you're cool with aging and want a bit more warmth and depth, polished nickel is a good choice. Stripes are another trend back in the spotlight. But let's be real, did they ever really leave? From fashion to interiors, stripe have always had a way of sneaking back into our lives. And it's no wonder, they've got some serious history. Once a low-class symbol worn by outcasts, Stripes started their glow up in the late 18th century, when everyone started getting tired of all the freely chinoiserie and craved something a bit fresher. Suddenly, vertical stripes were all the rage. By the 19th century, historical figures like Napoleon were decking out bedrooms and living rooms with stripes. And then they popped up again in the 20th century with Coco Chanel making Breton stripes a fashion staple. With the pandemic and everything, the past four years of interior design has really been focused on creating calm and restful spaces. That is why there's been lots of neutral monochromatic themes and also soft organic shapes. But after several years of quiet design, it seems that people are ready for something bolder. We want our homes to make a statement again. And honestly, what better way to do that than with an unapologetic stripe? So should we embrace this trend or let it stay in the past? Well, that depends. Stripes work with practically every interior style from classic to maximalist to minimalist, which is why it is very versatile. You could go bold and make a statement with say a broad cabana stripe or barcode stripe. But you could also get more subtle stripes like a pastel ticking stripe on a neutral background or a pinstripe and have it as a subtle accent on a pillow or perhaps an upholstered chair. Stripes can also be used to add visual height to a room with vertical patterns or you could also widen a room with horizontal stripes. 
The scallop motif has been making waves for centuries and has definitely made its way back into interiors in 2024. Some of the earliest evidence is in paintings of men and women wearing scallop edge lace collars in the early 1600s. In interior design, it became popular in the late Renaissance and when the Art Deco era rolled around in the 1920s. Scallops were absolutely everywhere. You couldn't escape them. Lighting, mirrors, tableware, you name it, it had a scallop edge. Fast forward to today, I think the wavy mirror combined with curvy and scallop edges trend is a little overdone. It seems like a collection of everything that is hot and trending at the moment. But when used sparingly, it can definitely add some softness and playfulness to a space, which I think many new built homes and apartments lack. I do like wavy edges in coffee tables or accent chairs. I think this shape brings something interesting especially when balanced out with more boxy or regular shaped furniture. But I've also seen it on a lot of dining tables. And while I do like the look, I'm really not sure about the practicality of some of the really curvy ones as everyone will be sitting at an awkward angle. When it comes to upholstery, I'm also noticing a huge uptick in curved silhouettes. I personally like seeing some curvy details, especially ones that are more gentle or ones that form to the body for comfort but there are also some that are very bulky that don't seem timeless to me. They are curvy just for the sake of being trendy. Another example is this house from the block with the scallop ceilings. Personally, I'm not a big fan. I think it encloses the room and makes it feel claustrophobic. If the ceilings were really high and it was designed holistically with the building, it could be great, but not really in this case. This one may not be so surprising, but the decade that gave us bell bottoms is back in fashion in the interior design world. Now, before you rush to drape your walls in orange and brown paisley, let's have a little chat. Sure, 70s inspired interiors are fun and nostalgic. Who doesn't love a mushroom lamp? But here's the thing, not everything from the 70s need a comeback. Shack carpets? Maybe not the best idea if you want easy to clean floors. Avocado green appliances? Another thing that can safely stay in the past. But don't write off the whole decade just yet. Some elements are making a good return. Low, chunky sculptural furniture is one example. Everyone seems to be getting the Togo by Ligne Rosé and the Cezanne launch by Gianfranco Frattini. Notice how they're all very marshmallowy, soft and curved, a bit of overlap with the irregular shape trends. Another 70s trend that's everywhere right now is timber wall paneling. Back then, they paneled everything, even the family station wagon. Today, it's mainly in kitchen cabinetry, storage units, accent walls, and maybe the odd ceiling. Not so much wood paneled cars, but the idea is the same. It is a great way to add warmth to interiors. So, should embrace the 70s trend. Sure, if you balance them with some contemporary elements to keep it fresh, it is all about that balance. As we were just talking about before, timber is really in at the moment, especially for kitchen cabinets. But it is not just warm wood finishes like white oak cabinetry there's also a growing trend for dark wood tones. So why the shift? Well, the return to darker woods had a lot to do with the popularity of white light wood from Scandinavian and minimalist movements, and the general slow distancing from the gray that dominated interiors for years. People are getting tired of these lighter finishes and want something richer and deeper with more character. But if mahogany or walnut feels a bit too intense for you, there's always the option of oak with a darker stain. It gives you that rich feeling without going all in on the darkness. And also, don't be afraid of using dark wood just because you have a more modern home. A common misconception is that darker tone wood is just for older homes, but I think it can become a statement in contemporary homes. The silhouette of the furniture itself plays a big role. I personally have a walnut dining table, and also this dark mango wood sideboard. Neither look out of place because of the shape and design itself. In fact, I don't think it would have looked as good had it been a light wood. Here's another twist on the timber trend, burlwood accents. If you're from the UK, you may know this as burwood. Anyway, if you're not familiar with it, burl is a growth deformity on trees. It forms when a tree is stressed out, whether that's from diseases or insects, or from physical trauma and starts growing these quirky knots and swirls. The result, a liquid marble effect. This can happen on practically any tree, but the most common is ash, as well as walnut, cherry, oak, maple, and redwood. Just a bit of background on burlwood if you're interested. It emerged in the early 1900s, became popular in the 1920s Art Deco era, and then was popular again in the 60s and 70s. But why is it coming back in 2024? I think it all ties back to the quiet luxury trend and the resurgence of 70s style. 
It exudes luxury because of its rarity. The bro pieces we're seeing today are more like the 70s style. They're a bit less busy and not as honey-hued as the deco pieces. It is definitely not to everyone's taste, but I do like burl wood. It's great for accent pieces, but I would not do multiple pieces in a room. Keep it to one coffee table or maybe a pair of bedside tables. It is a nice way to bring some contrast and interest to the wood tones you have in your space. I also feel it is rather style neutral, so it mixes well with other styles of furniture. After a decade of neutral color palettes, the pendulum now swings the other way. In 2024, we're diving headfirst into colorful kitchens, color drenching, and generally just embracing bolder hues. And right now, the hottest color palettes are all about pops of red and butter yellow. So you might have seen the pop of red trend all over TikTok. It is basically all about injecting a rebellious splash of red, whether that is a lamp, vase, or even a red frame around a traditional artwork. I agree that it is a great way to add drama in small doses, but a lot of TikTokers are mischaracterizing it as this magical way to elevate a room, and that just adding one red thing is going to automatically fix everything wrong with the space. But what I've seen is that it is often part of a more complex color scheme, like this room. There's heaps of blue everywhere, so adding in the red pop created a complementary color scheme because red and blue are opposite each other on the color wheel. Or here with the blue walls and yellow couch, Adding in the red lamp taps into a triadic scheme. So, the takeaway here is that a solitary red item isn't going to automatically elevate a space. It is more like a way to enhance a well thought out color scheme. But ultimately, this is just an example of how color palettes are getting brighter. I just thought I'll throw in a little lesson. Another color trend is yellow but in a more muted, calm tone. The trend towards more colorful spaces isn't really just about intense colors. This is an example of a more subtle transition from plain neutrals. But hopefully you're getting the idea that 2024 is all about more color. Not necessarily really bright ones, there's also room for ones that are more pastel-y. The last trend that I want to talk about is antique chairs and furniture. I'm all in on this one. Less waste, less consumption, and let's be real, every room could use a few pieces here and there that have a bit of character and history. I'll say that the three main subtrends here are getting mid-century modern pieces, art deco pieces, or Victorian pieces. Now, before you go clearing out your entire living room to make a space for a Victorian settee, a chaise lounge, a whatnot shelf, and a Davenport desk, let's get something straight. This trend isn't about turning your home into a time capsule or recreating a scene from a 19th century novel. It is about using antique pieces as an accent against all your contemporary furniture and striking that perfect balance between old and new. Or being thoughtful on the era of your house and getting the appropriate vintage or antique pieces. The one big downside of this trend is that I'm starting to see more and more people selling low quality vintage or antique pieces at such a high price. This is especially true for mid-century pieces. Everything is labeled as such now. Newsflash, not all antique or vintage pieces are high quality. So be careful and do some research beforehand. If you enjoyed this video, check out this video on 11 design trends that are overdone. Or this video where I'll talk about trends like accent walls or LED strips and how to execute them well. Otherwise, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.